So I think now is a perfect time for me to discuss the world between worlds, because I know a lot of people might be confused, or maybe some people need a refresher. The world between worlds first appeared in Star Wars Rebels Season 4. Ezra Bridger, which was one of the main characters of the show if you haven't watched it, accesses it through a portal at the Jedi Temple on Lothal. Now this was extremely rare to do, and it was something Palpatine was trying to get into. He had a whole operation there that he was trying to essentially get into the world between worlds, but he couldn't. And it took him using even Sith magic to be able to get in there, sort of, with his magic abilities, but he still wasn't physically in the world. It was just kind of his tendrils. Now, the world between worlds is kind of a series of paths and doorways that exist outside of normal time and space. It's a very expansive, infinite, starry void with numerous portals and walkways and many doorways. Now, these portals lead to different moments in time across the galaxy. So pretty much any moment in Star Wars, in the Star Wars movies or the Clone Wars or Rebels, you can pretty much just open a portal and walk into that or perhaps even meddle with something in that timeline. So this is where it gets kind of tricky, is the time manipulation part of it. Now, one of the most profound abilities of this place is the potential in and of itself to alter the past or foresee the future. For example, while in the world between worlds, Ezra hears Ahsoka Tano's battle with Darth Vader from a previous episode, one where we all thought she probably died. He intervenes by pulling her into the world between worlds out of her physical realm, out of where she was, right at the last second where she would have been sliced by Darth Vader. So essentially saving her from death and controlling the future, her destiny. Now, as you can imagine, this would make the Emperor extremely interested in a place like this. Imagine going to some place like this where you could see into time itself. You could see into the future. If you take certain paths, where will it lead? If you take other paths, where will that lead? And you can see all of this in real time for yourself as you're walking around. And I think time passes very differently in the world between worlds as it does outside of it. Now, the Emperor is aware of this realm and wants to control it, of course, to shape the fate of the galaxy as he sees fit. And this is why he tries to get access to Ezra so that he can get into the world. By the end of Star Wars Rebels, or rather the season four, the portal to the world between worlds on Lothal is destroyed to prevent its power from falling into the wrong hands, particularly Palpatine's. This act essentially removes the immediate threat of the realm being misused, which kind of seems to be a theme, like Ahsoka wanted to destroy the map if they couldn't get it first, because then that way Thrawn won't be able to be freed and come into this galaxy again, and basically take over. But that also means that Ezra would be lost forever. Now beyond the literal implications in the storyline, the world between worlds can be seen as a representation of the Star Wars saga's timeless nature. It's a really abstract, weird place where all moments in the saga are interconnected, and you can kind of hear everything echoing in this place, much like how the stories themselves are interwoven across different mediums and timelines in the saga. Now, the introduction of the world between worlds definitely added a very deep layer of mysticism to the Force and the broader Star Wars universe, emphasizing interconnectedness of events, characters, decisions, as well as potential consequences of meddling with the world between worlds, which can be very dangerous. And most of all, the natural flow of time. And this personally is why I'm not too fond of the world between worlds, while I think the concept is really interesting. I think it can be extremely dangerous, and personally, I'm not a big fan of time travel, unless it's back to the future. I just think that it cheapens the story and it makes things kind of eh, not as important. You can just go back in time or change an event. So personally, I don't want to see any sort of time travel, but to have a place where you could perhaps look into different doorways and see potential consequences of your actions or life paths chosen, I think would be pretty interesting and really valuable to know, which in of itself could alter the current state of the galaxy. I mean, imagine if Palpatine saw Vader betraying him and all this and that. He would have been prepared. He would have known. Now, when Ezra discovered the portal to the world between worlds in the Lothal Jedi Temple, this was a temple that had been shown previously in the show. It was said to have a nexus of powerful force energy and a place of significant visions and experiences for force-sensitive individuals. After participating in a ritual with the Loth Wolves, creatures deeply connected to the force on Lothal, Ezra is led to the temple. There, he is faced with a massive mural depicting the Mortis gods, the father, the son, and the daughter. Now, the Mortis Gods are three powerful force wielders introduced in the Star Wars Clone Wars animated series, one of my favorite arcs in the show. They are not gods in the traditional sense, but rather archetypal force beings who represent different aspects of the force. 
The father embodies balance, the daughter represents the light side, who ended up sacrificing herself for Ahsoka in the show, and the son symbolizes the dark side. The mural of the Mortis gods on Lothal is not just decorative, it's interactive in a way, responding to Ezra's touch and actions. By manipulating the mural, specifically positioning the daughter's stone image to bring life and the son's image to bring death, Ezra activates the portal to the world between worlds. This connection implies that the Mortis gods, or at least the force essence that they represent, are deeply linked to this realm outside of time and space. It underscores the fundamental nature of balance in the force and how the world between worlds might be a focal point for that balance. Once inside, Ezra encounters various portals to different moments in time. It's here that he hears Ahsoka's battle with Vader from a previous season, as well as so many other moments in Star Wars. I mean, we can hear stuff from the original trilogy, from the prequels, everything. Now, obviously, Ezra's act of saving Ahsoka demonstrates immense power and responsibility associated with this place. And this is why Ahsoka had to lay low during the original trilogy. After realizing the dangers of the realm, especially with the Emperor's interest in accessing it, Ezra and Ahsoka decide to leave. They re-enter their respective timelines, with Ezra ensuring that the portal at the Lothal Temple is destroyed to prevent its misuse. Now, personally, I think the incorporation of the Mortis gods into this aspect of Rebels ties together different parts of Star Wars, you know, the animated ones at least, you know, Clone Wars and Rebels. And it deepens the lore surrounding the Force. It reinforces the ideas of balance, interconnectedness, and the constant struggle between light and dark. I hope we get to understand more about the world between worlds because right now it is pretty vague and it's extremely mystic. So I hope in the next episode we get to go, you know, maybe on a journey with Anakin and Ahsoka through perhaps different portals because she always blames herself about, you know, not being able to save Anakin had she stayed at the Jedi Temple. And I think he's going to show her what would have really happened if she actually did stay at the temple. So I guess we'll see that. That'll be pretty cool. Imagine Ahsoka on Mustafar or at the Jedi Temple during Order 66. What would have happened? I still think Anakin would have gone through with everything because he had to, to save Padme, but it would have made things very interesting and emotional. Let me know what you guys think about the world between worlds. Are you for it or against it? Thanks so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you always.